Have you ever watched the movie Ryan's Daughter? Well, if not, you're in for a treat. This 1970 film packs a punch with its mix of humor, shock, and sadness. But wait, there's more keep watching because there are many fascinating facts to uncover. When was the first time you saw this film? Maybe it was a rainy afternoon with your family or a late night solo viewing. Regardless, Ryan's daughter has a way of leaving a lasting impression. Have you ever been inspired or deeply impacted by a movie? Ryan's daughter might just be that film for you. Whether it stirred your emotions or sparked a new perspective, its story has touched many lives. What's your most cherished memory related to this movie? Share your stories and experiences in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Ryan's Daughter, a 1970 film directed by David Lean, left a significant mark on cinema history. The movie received praise for its breathtaking visuals and gripping storyline. Set during World War I, it delves into themes of love, betrayal, and the struggles of ordinary people. The movie's portrayal of the Irish countryside and its people struck a chord with audiences worldwide. It depicted the challenges faced by regular folks during the war in a compelling manner. The characters, especially Rosie Ryan and Major Randolph Dorian, were captivating with their emotions and relationships. Ryan's daughter challenged the norms of its time, pushing boundaries in filmmaking. Its stunning cinematography and emotional depth set it apart. The moving score by Morris Jarr added to its impact. Though it didn't do well at first in theaters, Ryan's daughter has become a classic. Its themes of love, betrayal, and redemption remain relevant today. The exploration of human behavior and consequences still speaks to audiences. In conclusion, Ryan's daughter's influence and lasting significance are undeniable. Its timeless themes and memorable characters ensure its place in cinematic history for years to come. Ryan's Daughter, a film released in 1970, had an extensive shoot that spanned about a year. Trevor Howard and Barry Foster, who also appeared in the Battle of Britain, were part of the cast. The movie, a variation of Madame Bovary, was written for Sarah Miles by her husband Robert Bolt. The screenplay was intended to be directed by David Lean. Ryan's Daughter showcases the tale of a young woman in a small Irish village during World War I, navigating love, betrayal, and the consequences of her actions. The film's lengthy production period and notable cast members contributed to its significance in cinematic history. In the 1970 film, Robert Mitchum found himself in an unexpected role, playing a timid and frigid Irish schoolteacher. Director Sir David Lean, known for casting against type, believed such choices added intrigue to movies. The supporting cast also stirred discussion. Many, including Sarah Miles, thought Trevor Howard should have won Best Supporting Actor instead of John Mills. This viewpoint added a layer of controversy to the film's reception. Christopher Jones, who played a significant role, faced personal challenges during production. In mourning for Sharon Tate, a close friend, and possibly an ex-girlfriend murdered by the Manson family, Jones struggled. Engaged to Olivia Hussey at the time, Jones' lack of attraction to Sarah Miles further complicated matters. In an attempt to ease the tension during a particular scene, Miles and Mitchum conspired to drug Jones' breakfast. However, the plan backfired, leaving Jones nearly catatonic for the filming and contributing to his decision to retire from acting. This, combined with the grief over Tate's death, marked the end of Jones' acting career. Jones' performance in the movie received substantial criticism, becoming a notable drawback. The troubled dynamics on set and the personal challenges faced by the actors played a significant role in shaping the overall reception of the film. Ryan's Daughter, directed by Sir David Lean, faced challenges during its production. Lean clashed with MGM over the film's pace, causing production to halt until the issue resolved. Despite this, it became the fourth highest grossing film in the U.S. in 1970, earning over $13 million. Lean struggled to cast Major Randolph Dorian, initially eyeing Marlon Brando, but ultimately choosing Christopher Jones, unaware that Jones' voice was dubbed due to his poor acting. Julian Holloway eventually dubbed Jones' voice. These hurdles didn't hinder the film's success, as it resonated with audiences and critics alike. During the filming in Ireland's County Kerry, Robert Mitchum planted marijuana plants in the hotel's garden used by the cast and crew, introducing many to the drug, including Sarah Miles' mother and local police. Sarah Miles' first marriage ended due to her affairs with co-star Robert Mitchum and writer David Whiting. At the American premiere, after Charles and Rosie's love scene, a woman in the audience exclaimed about Mitchum's performance. Ryan's Daughter is a film directed by Sir David Lean. 
It follows the story of Rosie Ryan, the daughter of John and Clarice Miles. Released with high expectations by MGM, it aimed to replicate the success of Lean's previous work, Dr. Zhivago. However, critics panned the film, deeming its scale too grand for its simple love story. Lean took the criticism personally, and it affected him deeply. Despite turning a profit, the movie fell short of MGM's hopes for a blockbuster. During filming, several accidents occurred. Christopher Jones crashed his sports car, Trevor Howard was hospitalized after falling off a horse, and frogmen had to rescue Howard and Sir John Mills from drowning during a fishing boat scene gone wrong. Additionally, two vehicles sank in a peat bog. Despite the setbacks, Ryan's daughter remains a notable entry in Sir David Lean's filmography. Robert Shaw was considered for the role of Tim O'Leary in Ryan's Daughter. A few years later, he and Sarah Miles starred in The Hireling. Peter O'Toole was considered for Michael and Dorian, but turned down both parts. Sir David Lean had to wait for a year for a suitably dramatic storm to strike the Irish coast for a pivotal scene in which the villagers wade into the sea to retrieve a shipment of weapons intended for the IRA. Ryan's Daughter, a movie from 1970, has left some interesting traces in history. Firstly, the schoolhouse built on the cliffs in Dunquin Head still stands today. It's a tangible reminder of the film's setting and has become a notable landmark. During filming, Trevor Howard, one of the actors, faced personal challenges. His wife, Helen, visited him in Ireland, but they had a disagreement at a party. Later, she had a close call with a car accident on the hazardous roads of the area. Another noteworthy aspect of the movie is its filming format. It was the last theatrical movie photographed entirely in the 65mm Super Panavision format until Far and Away, which was also shot largely at the same locations. This format gives the film a distinct visual quality, capturing the rugged beauty of the Irish landscape. These facts add depth to the production of Ryan's Daughter and provide insights into both the filming process and the personal experiences of the actors involved. Julie Christie, though initially considered for the role of Rosie Ryan in the movie, ultimately declined it. Instead, the part went to another actress. John Daner, known for his distinctive voice, lent his narration talents to the U.S. trailer of the film, adding an extra layer of intrigue to the preview. Meanwhile, Niall O'Brien stepped into the spotlight, making his theatrical debut as Bernard, a pivotal character in the story. With its compelling narrative and notable performances, Ryan's daughter captivates audiences from start to finish. The skilled narration in its trailer only heightens the anticipation for what promises to be an unforgettable cinematic experience. Ryan's Daughter, a 1970 film, marked the final British movie shot in 65 in him until Hamlet in 1996, featuring Sir John Mills. During filming, he faced a near-death experience in the storm sequence, attributing it to director David Lean's negligence. The numerous delays and stress led to a nervous breakdown after completing his role, prompting a hiatus from acting for about three years. Despite criticisms associating the movie with the troubles in Northern Ireland, the project's approval predates the troubles by several years.